and welcome to Theater 360. I'm Miranda Palumbo bringing you the latest news from the Broadway community. Over spring break, I took a trip to New York to see a preview performance of the new Broadway musical, If Then. Before I launch into my review of the show, I want to make it clear that I saw the show while it was still in previews, meaning they could have addressed the problems I had with the show or made adjustments to things that I don't talk about. If you go see the show, things I talk about may not even exist. I don't know what changes have happened since I saw the show March 12th. I am in no way a real critic or official critic, and I'm just giving you my personal opinion on the version of the show that I saw. I also really admire Adina Menzel, the show's main character, so it does give me a little bit of a bias. Now, If Then, which opened March 30th, follows Elizabeth Vaughn, a woman on the verge of turning 40 who moves to New York City to start her life over. She meets up with Lucas, her old college friend, and Kate, her new neighbor. Kate suggests she go by the name Liz, and Lucas suggests Beth. Kate invites her to stay in the park and enjoy the music of the sexy guitar guy, but Lucas wants her to come with him to help him with his protest about the new city planning events. In that moment, Elizabeth has a choice to make. The story then splits and examines both options. Liz stays in the park and meets Josh, an army surgeon who just returned from a tour. Beth goes with Lucas and gets a high paying job with an old flame. The story unfolds and showcases two parallel stories while Elizabeth reflects on the choices she made. Now, here's what I liked about the show. First off, Adina Menzel. I mean, come on. As I said, I am biased, but you cannot deny her amazing talent. It's been 10 years since she has been on Broadway, but she hasn't skipped a beat. Her opening line, hey, it's me, brings the audience to a roaring applause. This is her show. Her huge range is showcased perfectly in Tom Kitt and Brian Yorkey's score. Menzel brings a human quality to Elizabeth. She's vulnerable, lonely at times, and wants what many women do, a happy ending. She doesn't let her personal life interfere with her performance. In fact, I think it enhances it. She's currently separated from her longtime husband, Tay Diggs, and is living in New York with their son, trying to start over. Adina can identify with Elizabeth, and that transparent feeling is present in her character. The rest of the cast has one actor better than the next. You cannot deny the sweet yet goofy Lucas, played by Anthony Rapp, the witty jokes LaShawns brings to Kate, the humble and patriotic quality of James Snyder's Josh, and the sensational voice of Jen Colella, who plays Anne. In my opinion, this cast could make a musical out of an old phone book, and it would be amazing. Another thing I really enjoyed was Mark Wenland's set. I liked the mirror that separated the two-level set and played to the idea of reflecting on choices. I thought it was used especially well during the song Map of New York. A subway map lit up the bottom of the stage and was reflected in the mirror above, creating something really cool. Wenland's idea of a large turntable to show the change in location was simple but useful. I thought it worked really well in Act 1 when both Liz and Beth were contemplating sleeping with three different men. That being said, this show is not something you bring your young children to see. Larry Kegwin's choreography was simplistic but well suited for the show. The music didn't call for big flashy dance numbers and the pedestrian style choreography matched the tone of the show overall. I absolutely loved the music. I think Tom Kitt and Brian Yorkey did a great job showcasing the quieter side of Adina's voice. In an interview with the New York Times, Adina shared her insecurities about people not loving her because she isn't belting high notes at every waking moment. But you come to appreciate her quiet and soulful voice. I fell in love with all of the songs, but especially her duet with Anthony Rapp. I cannot wait for the album to be released on June 3rd. Finally, I have never experienced a musical that gave me time for self-reflection. While watching If Then, I examined my own life and thought about the choices I've made. If one of them would have been different, how much would my life have changed? Would I still have ended up where I was supposed to be? Now, there were a few things I hope they improved upon before the show opened. The show itself needed a more specific focus on Elizabeth. I think by achieving that, it would solve some of the problems I'm about to address. I think they need to work on Elizabeth's overall character development. I identified with her, and many of the women around me did. In Act 2, when Elizabeth talked about how she was obsessive and neurotic, I said to myself, how did they know I was coming to see the show? But many women did not identify with that character who wants to have it all. If they can't identify with her, the writer should find a way to make them empathize with her. If they focus more on Elizabeth and her story, I think it will cut down on another problem with the show. It's length. 
I didn't feel it was too long, but I think I was the only person who felt that way. Everyone was shifting in their chairs during the last half hour. That being said, I think they could cut down the length of some of the musical numbers, including the opening of Act 2 and the plane crash song. To cut down the length, I think the stories between the supporting characters could be less emphasized. While these actors are great and deserve the time they have, eliminating the duets between David and Lucas, as well as the duet between Kate and Anne in Act 2, will help keep the story focused on Elizabeth. I understand that the writers wanted to showcase how Elizabeth's choices affect those around her, but I think it could be done more subtly. Now, I do have some additional comments that kind of don't really fit into what I liked and what I didn't like. People had difficulty distinguishing between Liz and Beth, but I think the difference was made pretty clear. Kenneth Posner used warmer red lighting for Liz and cooler blue lights for Beth. This didn't help me figure out who was who. I mean, I could do that on my own, but I think it represented the differences between characters in Liz and Beth. If you really weren't paying attention, the lighting changes and alternating glasses on Adina were your clues. People are saying that the story is cliche. Yes, it mirrors the movie Sliding Doors, but it is not about the story. Tom Kitt and Brian Yorkie do a beautiful job making this a concept musical, where the show's metaphor about fate and chance is more important than the story itself. Also, I feel that comparing this musical to Rent, as some people have done, doesn't have much merit. Yes, it has two of the same actors and the same director, as well as the same setting, but Rent was a lot more about the story. This musical is contemporary, like Rent was, but I don't find that many similarities that make this statement valid. People are also asking, what is going to happen when Adina leaves? Yes, this is her show, and I think they need her name to help get it off the ground, but during her ballad during Act 2, I was able to picture another powerhouse vocalist in her place. That shows a great future for the show. If you like a musical with a definitive story and big flashy musical numbers, then If Then is not the show for you. Overall, I would give this show 4 out of 5 stars. I think they can get it together and produce something really great regardless of what critics think. That's all the time we have for today. I will see you next time for more Theater 360. Thank you.